Good morning, everyone. This is Sid, your host of Sit Down with Sid podcast. This is season two, episode number 14. I have a very special guest all the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. He is an award-winning morale and airbrush artist, painter, as well as an illustrator. Uh, his journey is very inspiring. You know, born in India, came from India, uh, built a very successful name for himself in this industry. And that being said, it's my pleasure and honor to welcome Raman Bhardwaj. Hi, Raman. How are you, sir? I'm good, sir. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks, Raman. I know you're a very busy guy, so we appreciate you for taking the time uh, to do this with us. Uh, so, okay. Raman, before we kind of start this podcast, would you take a moment for a few minutes, explain our audience a little bit about your background, um, you know, where you're from? How did you get up here? And then we'll kind of go into the podcast. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Raman Bhardwaj. I was born in Chandigarh city of India. And I am an artist. Like I do illustrations, murals, paintings, fine art, design. And you know, I've been doing this for the last 23 years. And I moved to the US in 2018. And ever since that, you know, I started doing murals here, and mm -hmm. it's, it's been a good artistic journey so far, and enjoying every bit of it. That's great. So, so t t take us back to your childhood. Like, how did did you love to paint? Did you love art? Like, how did this? I mean, it seems like you're very passionate. Your work speaks for itself. So, so tell us how did it all started? You know. Yeah, so it, uh, it's. I I was always interested in drawing, uh, you know, as far as I can remember since the age of five or six. I think that's the age every kid, uh, you know, starts drawing, doodling, having fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I just uh, stuck to it. And, you know, as, as, as I went to school, I, I saw I was uh, you know, better than uh, others around me. So mm -hmm. I, I realized that's my thing. And, and I wasn't a very uh, outdoor guy you know like I, I was not a, into sports and I, I was a shy child so mm -hmm. I would sit in my room and draw a lot you know those cartoons comics whatever and it, it gradually you know uh, increased uh, a lot and I was filling thick sketchbooks in the school and that's how it started and you know by I think seventh or eighth grade uh, you know my, my father told me that you know there's a, a College of Art, and I think you know you should go join it and do a degree, and or maybe you can become a professional artist. And mm -hmm. you know that that put the seed in me in my, in my mind that yeah, that, that's that's what I want to pursue. So that's great. You did your schooling. You went to college. You did your art stuff, bachelor's, bachelor's in art, and then uh, you got a job for a major English newspaper where you were working as an illustrator. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, yeah, just fresh out of college, and uh, there was a you can see in this leading English newspaper, uh, the Indian Express. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure, you've heard of it, and yeah, in, in Chandigarh, I was in Chandigarh, and so I joined it as an illustrator. Uh, I also did some uh, uh, write-ups on art. And, uh, by that time, I had done my master's in art history. So, yeah, I, I continued that profession for for a decade before becoming a freelance artist so, so let me ask you what what transpired what was the switch that said you know what i want to become a freelancer and do it on my own terms and have the freedom of doing what i do yeah i think every creative individual has uh, that thing inside to be to be free to be, mm -hmm. uh, able to express yourself freely and you know, I, I was never a nine to five, nine to five guy, and mm -hmm. you know, even uh, the the newspaper industry was still uh, different than a nine to five because you know I was going in the evenings and mm -hmm. at night, and it was exciting. The name was getting out in the region, and people would see my cartoons, illustrations, whatever. But yeah, um, after a few years, I, I then I start feeling stagnant. I feel like I, I can't just keep doing it all my life. Mm -hmm. you know? Switched the newspaper, I joined another newspaper, did some design and illustration same, but mm -hmm. uh, I could see that, you know, now, now Chandigarh is a small city and right. limited scope and 
Mm-hmm. And I, you know, it's like you see your your seniors or uh, senior artists in the city, and, and I, feel like, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't want to limit my scope. This is the time. Maybe I should experiment more and uh, utilize my talent if there is any, mm-hmm. rather, rather than regretting later after two decades that and, and tell people stories. Oh, I could have done this. I could have done that. So, and, and times were changing. Uh, like the, the internet industry was uh, opening up for. Uh, people like us that you know you could connect to anyone in the world uh, mm-hmm. to get work. And, and animation was also on rise at that time so you know i did a uh, uh, some training in, in 3d animation 2d animation and i thought that yeah let's take a plunge at this time and, and uh, let's see uh, what i can do <laughs> so uh, i think it was 2010 i, I quit my job and, mm-hmm. Just went solo and uh, and you were still based in Chandigarh. You never had a you never thought of going to metropolitan cities like New Delhi, Chennai, Kolkata. I I I had thought I had considered that, but uh, you know I was very uh, attached to my parents and and mm-hmm. they you know we were like like two brothers. So my elder brother came to the U.S. when he was young, uh, you know, maybe thirty years ago, mm-hmm. and. And my parents were like, you know, I was back with them, and and you know, uh, in India the family structure is so close knit, and we are so emotionally attached to each other. And, and uh, my mom never wanted me to leave the city. She was like, let's let's live together. You're doing fine here. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not I'm trying to blame it on her, but I also thought that okay, I mean, it's good. I was really uh, kind of, you know attached to my mom. I said, yeah, maybe I can do something here. Just. The, the, the job is fine and I'm getting noticed I was doing some painting and we can just uh, continue here and I never yeah I, I considered moving but uh, somehow it was, it was just a you can say I don't know like it's compromise or <laughs> I I made a decision to stay back in my home city with my parents so so let me ask you Roman now I know you all do illustrations, you do painting, you do cartoon animations. Could you mind, would you mind giving us steps? Like what was step one? Like, did you start just as, a, as an artist? Then, then I mean, you're a muralist as well. So what draw you to do that? You know, you also do the airbrush art because you, I have seen your work and you, your work is so diverse, you know, and, and whatever you do, I mean, I would recommend the audience to definitely check out your website for your work. We we will have that in the description of this video as well, because everything that you do that is displayed on your site is top notch craftsmanship, right? So 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 t- tell us like how you started and then what what inspired you to you know what said I want to go in in this side of the industry and so forth. Sure. So. Initially, I was interested in drawing, just pen drawings, illustration. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I uh, had a chance uh, when I was in eighth grade or something to illustrate some books for local mm-hmm. publishers who were, who were friends with my father. I mean, I was in school, nobody's going to pick me up, but, but, you know, he, he helped me. He said, connected to some uh, local publishers. He said, yeah, my son does good drawings. So I did some illustrations and I think that I thought that, yeah, I can become an illustrator, book illustrator. So that was my uh, main thing. And you know, when I went to college, I was uh, focusing more on illustrations. But you know, in the college, there's an artistic atmosphere. So you see a lot of other things happening. So I started painting on canvas like you know, gallery artist on the side. But the focus was on being a commercial artist and being an illustrator. And... Then, Do you mind telling our audience what is a commercial artist? You know, it, is there some difference between commercial and residential artist, or or is that just a term that you use in your industry, commercial artist? Uh, a commercial artist is, uh, you know, you, the artist that basically uses his art for commercial purposes. Like, okay, I, when you, you can use my illustration for advertisements, for I understand. Okay, for for mass media. And then there is there are gallery artists who are fine artists who create paintings in their studio, but it's not uh, it can be commissioned, but it's not for selling a product or something. Mm-hmm. 
just their own, you know, imagination, their inner world, you know, like poetry. So they'll do the paintings and uh, so the the thing with uh, being a fine artist is that it's, it's it's difficult to support yourself being just a fine artist and you know just painting uh, creating paintings in your gallery with no place to you know, store them or trying to sell them and uh, in India or even here I think it's not something sustainable that you know you you're selling your paintings that you can pay your bills right. You're 50 paintings or 30 paintings a month. So, so what, what fine artists have to do is find another job. And I'm not talking for everyone, but, but that, that's the trend that they, they find a job in some other field. Like, you know, they can be a teacher, they can be mm -hmm. anything else, then uh, create uh, you know, art on the side or, you know, keep, keep focusing on that and hoping to be big or sell or, or just enjoy. So uh, commercial artists, uh, on the other hand, is you know right right away working for agencies, mm -hmm. advertising agencies, or, or books, or publishers, or media, press, so that you know they, they are uh, selling their art for some purpose. Like if I'm an illustrator for a book, so I'm representing their idea, helping them to uh, you know, uh, put across their idea through illustrations. But is that something, Raman, that you as an illustrator reaches out to the PR firm or is that the other way around when they see that you're recognized for your work, they reach out to you? I'm very curious to know that. Like, how it, does that work? It works uh, both ways. Like in, in the beginning, definitely you have to reach out to yourself. Okay. Even in later stages, but but yeah, in the beginning, especially you have to go, like you go to an ad agency, show mm -hmm. them your I'm an illustrator. I'm interested in joining you, and you, know, you can join a studio and start working on various projects like packaging or whatever illustrations. Or you can reach out to book publishers and show them your portfolio, or even connect with uh, you know, indie writers and you know, tell them you know I can illustrate your book and negotiate okay. a price. Mm -hmm. or, you know, I was I was just lucky that you know the newspaper was right there on the time that job and I. Had, I did the same thing. I approached the editor, showed them my illustrations, and they were looking for somebody. They hired me. And once you make a name, you know, from word to mouth, it travels. People tell that, you know, I work with this guy, he's good. And so, uh, and as a freelancer, I think you have to market yourself a lot. You make a website, social media, whatever you can, so that more mm -hmm. people can see your work and reach out to you. And mm -hmm. that's how you get more commissions. Got so, it. If that makes so, sense. Like... Got it. So now, now fast forward in 2018, you, what, what, like, what made your mind set? Like, what happened where you said, you know what? Let me try. Let me go to the United States. Let me try this journey there. I mean, as you said, you know, you were very close to your parents, and it was a very tough decision, I'm sure, for you to kind of leave your parents if if they are there. I don't know if they are there or if they are here with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so tell us what happened, like, you know, when you said, you know what, it's enough. I have spent and tried everything I could in India, and I would like to explore, uh, you know, to another country. Yeah, so I, I wasn't uh, very uh, ambitious in the term of, you know, monetary success as such. Like I said, I was very emotional, and, and I had a very spiritual bent uh, all my life. So, you know, we are more like, you know, satisfaction is inside and, and if you are doing what you like you are already successful you, you, get, you have love you are uh, you know your parents and you know you're doing what you want to do so that's enough and uh, but yeah uh, like you know my, my mother uh, expired in, in 2017 very sorry to hear that so you know that is that is when I just thought that, you know, maybe uh, something that was holding me back is not there anymore and maybe I should now try. And and before, uh, um, I mean, it's surprising or uh, I don't know, coincidence that before uh, her death, a uh, few months ago, she's been just saying that uh, maybe, you know, you should uh, go out and, you know, go move to, to the U.S. and try out and, and you can expand more and 
I see you, you have good work, but you know, I see others like even your brother. So and maybe you should you should go. And and I said, yeah, that's a good thing. If you are open to it, I'm I, I've always wanted, but yeah. And I don't know that was a coincidence or what or she knew something of right. But, but uh, and it was a sudden uh, death of her in 2017 when you know things just shook me up and I was like, you know, life is short and you should try to do whatever you can and you know, maximize your potential. And that's when I thought and I, uh, you know, I applied for this uh, artist visa, which is, you know, also the it's termed as visa for people with extraordinary ability. It's an O1 visa given to artists and sports people and people in the science field. Mm -hmm. It's a coveted visa. You have to have some certain uh, parameters to fulfill, like you know, at least a national award um, and press coverage and name and in your field experience and expertise in your field and. Uh, and luckily, I had been accumulating all that over the years. Like I had a national award for illustrations in India. Lot of That's people. amazing. Yeah, I think and at that point, I didn't know why. Like, you're just enjoying the journey and collecting whatever you can. And, you know, right. Several exhibitions and a you know, lot of uh, media coverage and expertise. So I think it all uh, was just building up for this moment. And so I, and then I moved here 2018. Yeah, that, that's how I came here. And you know, I, I came to Greensboro, North Carolina because you know my brother has been living here for long and I thought you know sure. be close by and we can connect you know, in time. So how was it for you here? I mean, of course, you know, I, I I'm 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 from India, you know, I came here 17 years ago and you know, the first time I came here, I was like, wow, this is amazing, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but I came here to study and, and then, you know, I got into a professional field, but for yourself, you were already in the professional setting when you came here as a freelancer. Um, I do see you have a lot of clientele, uh, very recognized names, you know, that displays your art as well, such as the city of Gronesboro, you have the Art Pop Street Gallery, the YWCA Charlotte, uh, and and many more, you know. So how has this been transformation for you from India to US, uh, different landscape, different mindset, just a different ball game? How has that been? Yeah, it was a huge change. Like you said, uh, you know, uh, I, I was definitely very fascinated with everything. Everything looked bigger, cleaner, greener, <laughs> and less traffic compared to India. Right, and right. Of course, but uh, there were difficulties also. And, uh, you're using your second language as your primary now all the time. Right, right. And then everything just seems super expensive. And, and also then I... Uh, I, did, uh, I didn't have a job, but I, I'm a freelancer. I guess most people come here with a job. And right. I, I, I can't speak for them whether it's easy or not, but I think uh, it was a little difficult because I had clients with whom I was working for, for a decade or so, but uh, I didn't realize that the, the cost could be uh, totally different when I come here. And it was right. I, I lost a few clients, but then I picked up some more locally. And I think the initial uh, first year was a little, little challenging. Mm -hmm. I won't say tough, but uh, challenging to, to you know, accommodate to the to the culture uh, and uh, you know, coming to terms with the uh, increased cost. So that was a bit challenging, and uh, I would say to an extent worrisome also. And um, yeah, you know, uh, uh, I had kids. I was uh, 42, maybe. Mm -hmm. and I was challenging getting you know, you're, you're going to compete with all these youngsters here. And right. Trying, some people were telling me, like, you know, uh, you're an old tree and you don't uproot you know, yourself and try to plant it, transplant mm -hmm. you know, somewhere else at this age. 
that may be a mistake and but I always had like you know confidence in my skills and my skills I'm gonna do it yeah. so did you also reach out the like PR firms here the newspapers magazines um, or as a freelancer you I mean you work with these uh, galleries and everything you approach them and then they display your art and then once they sell that's how you make money correct me if I'm wrong the structure of no, that, that's that's quite right. So yeah, I, I started reaching out everywhere I could think of. I, I made a plan that you know where I can apply my art. So I would reach out to newspapers, magazines, and you know set it up. My website was already there, so I just mm -hmm. started promoting it on Google and Instagram, and you know asking people, reaching out. You know, do you need them? And then I saw here murals, a mm -hmm. big thing. Which is uh, back in India, it is not. Right. It may be now in some cities like you know Bangalore, Delhi now, but at right. my time and even now in, in North India, it's not a thing. You know, of course, I was aware on internet that people make right. murals. You know, I, I I did some for my friends in India on some small walls, and I was fascinated. But, but it wasn't a thing that you could pursue as a profession. But here it's different, and you know, at Greensboro, I think I arrived at the right time. It was there was a boom of murals going on, and you know, I I started reaching out, and and there's a, uh, a realtor, uh, Focus Properties. Mm -hmm. He uh, he really supports. Uh, you know, he's a fan of street art. And, and he brings artists from all over the world here to you know, be on a lot of buildings to put street art here and you know make people aware. You know, you know, I just reached out to him. I said, hey, I'm an artist. I want to start in murals. You know, I, I had already done a couple of them, uh, smaller size. So you know, uh, he met me. He saw my work and he said, yeah, that's that's good. You know, let's try something. You know, on a on a trial basis. You know. You know uh, give you some support with paints and food and all, and let's see. Said, yeah, but how is it? How is it perceived there? I mean, uh, for those of who don't know, muralist, uh, mural is pretty much a painting on a wall, correct? You yes. you paint a sculpture or like a portrait just on a wall, you know. And uh, because some people can be like, you know, what graffiti is an art it's in itself. To some people, yes. graffiti is they don't support it. They think they're they ruining the walls. But who, as an artist, mm -hmm. people appreciate what a graffiti is, right? Uh, is and as, yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead, Roman. Uh, I mean, there's a difference between graffiti and, and, and murals. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know, graffiti is mostly uh, based on letters. Okay. Uh, what they call tagging, like each each graffiti artist, or they call them graffiti writers, they have uh, a tag name for them. So, and then they they compose those letters shape, uh, which is not easily readable, and only they can read. It's like a language, and everyone knows graffiti started in the background as you know, expression, right? And on the street, so it's like a, a revolution or something like that, right? Uh, even now, the, the graffiti artists, uh, uh, they may not be necessarily uh, protesting against something, but they they are uh, separate than muralists. Uh, I mean, some people do both, murals as, as well as graffiti, but right. me being an artist, uh, I don't do graffiti, I just do murals. Okay. Which is, you know, you're beautifying the environment with, with images, beautiful images interior or exterior so it's not illegal it's not uh, encroachment on somebody's property or defacing something it, it's again like a commercial commission piece you know people want uh, something on their wall to, to so instead of instead of putting a banner on a highway as an advertisement you can put a mural on a wall as an advertisement correct exactly you can do that okay. too okay yes yeah. Whereas okay. uh, some people would just want a, a good image on their uh, business so that it becomes a landmark. Like right. it doesn't have to be always uh, about your business. Right. You know, you may have a, a, a retail business or anything, but you say like, hey, I, I like uh, Madonna, I like Elvis Presley, and you know, 
I just want to put it out there and so many people will like it. They're going to take pictures. They're going to remember this building and uh, just making a contribution to the community. Yeah. Right. So, Raman, a few more things before we wrap this up. Now, I, I did see you painted a, a mural of Anthony Bourdain and that's how I, I was so blown away. You know, he's someone um, we really admire in our household. And, and when I saw that, um, I, I, as I said, you know, I, I was completely blown away by your craftsmanship. My question to you is, uh, now, do, these are something that you get on request, right? Like, hey, can you draw this, this, this? Can you give us a time frame on how long it takes for you to, for example, you did the Anthony Bourdain Moral. How long it took you from start to finish to do something like that? Because that is epic. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Uh, so yeah, that that mural, Anthony Bourdain mural that you're talking about, is uh, about I think 14 feet high and maybe eight to 10 feet wide. Uh, it's like a medium size, not too big, but right. I think I finished it in two to three days. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I worked pretty fast. <laughs> but and I then, how to... do you paint? Do you use do you use brush? Do you use spray paint? How does mural works different than like, you know, an, an, an airbrush artist or something? Yeah, spray paint is uh, the most preferred medium because they are uh, permanent and you can work fast and you can achieve like realism because it's easy to blend colors with spray paint. Okay. As opposed, as opposed to brushes. Well, I, I use a combination of both, but a lot of this stuff, like Anthony Gordon is totally in spray paint. And these are like professional grade uh, spray paints. Uh, created just for murals and graffiti. Mm -hmm. They are they are different than Rustodium and the ones you get in uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. So they 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 are fast drying. They come with different cap sizes to achieve like you know sharp small lines to broad coverage and uh, with a mix of that they are low pressure. So they give a very really, really fine uh, spray, just like. Uh, an airbrush and you can it's just on a larger size and you can create realism with that so, that's amazing yeah that's amazing um so now what's your goal like what where do you see yourself like what's your where do you want your art to be displayed at like are you thinking of new york city are you thinking about los angeles um do you have any goal in mind regarding that uh, nothing as a specific, but yeah, like you said, yeah, I definitely want my art to be in most cities of US and even outside US and rest of the world. All like you said, LA, New York, in galleries, right. on the walls. Yeah, I think that that that's the goal. Uh, that's a dream to uh, make as because there's a lot of potential. The reason I brought these cities up: Chicago, LA, New York. There are yeah. there is a lot of potential, especially also somewhere like down south Texas. Um, mm -hmm. You do see a lot of murals on the walls and everything. Uh, Arizona is big on this, so I think it would be a great exposure for you to kind of you know go out of your comfort yeah. zone from Carolina to uh, right. because I I personally feel that you know your art will be very much appreciated in these cities, you know. That's just my my opinion and my feeling. No, definitely, I I totally agree with you, and I think I've, I've achieved a very good level in that uh, finish. Mm -hmm. It's very competitive, and there. But I am trying to branch out to make a name so that more people notice. I do get queries once in a while, uh, you know, from uh, other cities like New York and LA also for me and so Kentucky, but uh, nothing has been finalized yet but I'm, I'm hoping you know uh, this year or can be big you know, it's already the name is uh, getting out people are noticing my work and mm -hmm. I'm working on that too you know, so I have one I have one last question on this is so when you say it's very competitive mm -hmm. I mean art is something that's quality right yeah right. it is also it is also somehow uh, proportional to the cost but when you as a freelancer is trying to compete with other local freelancers in those states yeah is it more of the cost thing is it more of the technique thing is it more of the kind of 
paint you use? Can you can you tell me a little bit more about this? Very curious to know. Um, what I understand is, yeah, it's the cost will be the first thing. Okay. So, you know, if, if you want me to come to New York and paint, uh, I'll charge what I charge for the painting plus the cost for travel and stay. So that I think uh, increases the cost and then it would be uh, easier for them to get a local artist. And even if the quality is a little low and different, okay, it's, it's on the wall. Um, it's, it's not something people are looking with a magnifying glass in a gallery, so it's fine. But uh, but yes, there there are artists who have become world famous, and people pay for them to fly in, and, and, and because they just want a name that you know, look, hey, we got this big uh, Picasso of the mural art, come here and put his name and the mural there. So oh yeah, people will spend money for art. Yes, they will. I, I can give yeah, you yes. like somebody they will do that, but you know, yeah, it's a it's, it's like a brand thing. So okay, and I believe in luck. Like so it's a lot about luck. Okay, um, yeah. and I also want to let our audience know that they can find you on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, your handle is artist Raman, and then you also have a website which we will also put in the description. Um, uh. Last thing before we wrap this up, Raman, uh, if there is a message for you um, as a striving entrepreneur in a very competitive field that you are in, what message would that be to the younger generation who wants to follow the same path like you do? That's a responsibility to say, but um, I would say practice a lot, practice, 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 work hard. Yeah. Be skillful. Second thing is watch out not to be uh, you say exploited by by people who you know we want you to work for free for exposure. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Also, try to be versatile. If you want to survive, you gotta be versatile and do be open to doing different things and in, in art, of course, like you know. Uh, from drawing to animation to logo design, murals, illustrations. So the, the more uh, you have an, uh, a wide variety that you can offer, uh, the more it can ensure that you, you will be successful. That's great. Uh, Raman, I want to thank you very much for your time. And, and before I let you go, I also want to let your audience know one more time. Guys, please check out Raman's work uh, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Artist Roman. Uh, he also has uh, some pictures for if you want to shop for some of his uh, products, some of his pictures, you can go to his website. Uh, Raman, is there anywhere else they can they can reach out to see your work and buy? Or uh... Yeah, my, my website, like you said, and, and I'm also on TikTok. Uh, it's, it's the same artist, Raman, but I have to add .com in front of it because uh, artist Raman wasn't available. So on TikTok, I'm artistraman.com. Right. But Facebook, Artist Raman, and uh, Instagram, Artist Raman, and my website, artistraman.com. Uh, that's where you can see my work and reach out. And if you want to commission me something special like a portrait or, or buy you know, what I create a lot, why not? So. That's great, Raman. So we will actually also add the TikTok uh, link in the description. Uh, thank Raman, thank you very much for your time. I know it's, uh, it's a busy day. Uh, we want to wish you all the very best. Um, I wish we can do this again for a longer uh, period of time. Um, I personally am very inspired by your journey. Um, and uh, I wish you nothing but all the best in all your endeavors, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Sis, very much. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you for having me here and reach out to your subscribers. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to talk to you today. And, and yeah, yeah, uh, definitely, I will, will do it again. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thank you, Raman. Uh, we want to wish you all the very best. And once again, you have a great day. Okay. Thank you very much. You too. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>